Welcome to Plugged In with Fender. My name is Kenny Beats, and now it's time to get down to the scary stuff. That's right, recording guitars with microphones through amps. Let's get it. Today you're gonna need two microphones and a pair of headphones, along with the guitar and amp. It's all you need. I'm doing this in my small studio with carpeted floors and a very little room. We don't have a bunch of things to choose from, but we're gonna get a good tone either way. I'm using an Octava MK12, and I'm using an RCA 74B that's literally older than my mom. Why am I using these two microphones? Because they were on records that I love. I know for a fact that this was the room mic in a lot of the rooms that I liked records from, and I know for a fact that this was the guitar and snare mic on a lot of records that I loved. That's why I bought them, that's why I use them. There's no deeper meaning to it. It's not because I can tell you about the science behind a capsule and why this one works better than that one. It's because I've tried a ton of mics, this is what I like. I've asked a ton of engineers, this is what they use. Close mics don't sound how you normally think they're gonna sound. That microphone right up on your snare drum or this microphone right up on this speaker isn't exactly what you're hearing in the room and what you love about the sound. That's why you hear all these scientist ass engineers talking about the binaural head and all these different things that are actually routed in human perception. It goes deep, we're not gonna go there. My point is, room mics are everything. Room mics are everything. Room mics, say it with me, room mics, oh yeah, you got it, are everything. I've learned that that one room way back in the distance, whether it's for my guitar amps, for my drum kit, for a lot of different things, that's gonna bring so much of that perception, so much of what that room feels like and what I was hearing whenever I listened to that part get recorded. The room mic is a very dark, vintage old mic, which is gonna give us a lot of body and a lot of low end. So normally with placement, you can move a little bit away from the center of the speaker and that's gonna give you less brightness. But in this case, we want the brightness because both of our microphones are dull and we want all that sharpness from the tele pickups and from the tubes to get picked up without us having too much overbearing low end. We're placing this microphone about four inches back directly in the center of the left cone. So we're feeling good about our two mics. We're feeling good about our placement. We know why we're doing this. Now let's dial our amp in a little bit and we can get to recording. So I'm usually recording my volume at around a three. My treble to taste, depending on which guitar I'm using. But for this Telecaster, you don't need to over boost it. It's got a very sharp sound. So my treble's at about five. I'm known to boost my mids. I'm always trying to rip off Queens of the Stone Age or idols or bands that have guitars that are piercing in the middle. So my middle is at about six right now. And generally with Fender tube amps, they give you so much power that low end is never really what you're missing. So on this amp, I've got it dialed back to about three and a half for the bass. It's a twin reverb. Why are you using it if there's no reverb on it? I've always got my reverb on at all times when I'm playing a Fender amp at a minimum of a two. But for today, we're pushing it. I'm gonna say that's about a 3.146825. Not gonna use any of the tremolo vibrato today, it's just not necessary for the tone we're going for. But let's see how this is feeling. So now we've got our favorite Telecaster and our favorite twin reverb ready. We've dialed in the settings on our amp. We picked our two favorite mics for our close mic and our room, and we've got the placement on both of those all set. Now, let's listen to some drums I recorded the other day, and we'll play on top of those in headphones. mic, our close mic, our condenser that's right in the middle of the cone, this is what everything is sounding like. It's a little shaky on the guitar playing, but next, our room mic the RCA 74B, 
which is a couple feet back and a little higher up, getting more ambiance, getting more texture from the space around, sounds like this. I'm not gonna lie to you. Working in DAWs was always very easy for me and when I pulled up two sounds and I put them on top of each other, unless there was an EQ problem or a volume problem, they worked. That is not the case with microphones, let me tell you. I've watched all the old man tutorials that you don't need to watch, that's why you're watching this one. Two mics together equals problems, equals phasing, equals these things are receiving the same sound at different times. So when you play them back on top of each other, we have these two tones we really like of the same recording, but they're not quite sitting in the same place. How do we fix this problem when we have two microphones that we like the sound of, but we wanna play them together? Some people are geniuses and they know how to fix the placement so they're in exactly the same space in the room and everything's receiving everything at the right time. I can't do that. So I use plugins. You don't have to use plugins. If you're in Pro Tools, you can do things like jump to transient. There's a lot of ways to line up those two points. But for me, I'm using a plugin that I love from Sound Radix called Auto Align. How does Auto Align work? You put Auto Align on one track. That's gonna be mic number one. That's our close mic. And we're gonna send it to one. We're gonna put Auto Align on our other track. And then we're gonna receive from one. Now our first mic, mic one, is sending all that information to mic two so that they can line each other up and those transients can be at exactly the right point so we have no phasing issues and we're getting the best of both worlds from what both microphones are doing on top of each other, same time. See how not scary this is? We got it, I got you, you got me, Fender's got both of us, come on, it's E, come on. Microphones, amps, come on. We're gonna play them back right now together and we're gonna hit this detect button. So now mic two can detect all the differences in the spacing of the room and how far apart from the recording signal these two microphones are and it can align them together. So now it's detected how far apart the two mics are. We can leave auto align on both and they should work together. So now we're getting that low end from mic two and we're getting all that clarity from mic one without any of the phase issues at all. Some of these things you can't emulate. Some of these things are not the same. And that clean tone that you're pulling up in that plugin might work for certain instances. But when I wanna sound how these classic records really sound, oftentimes I'm picking up my Telecaster, I'm going to my twin reverb, and I'm plugging in these microphones. All the different scary studio stuff that feels like it's unattainable or feels like you're never gonna get to it is really not that hard. It just takes a couple good questions and a few good teachers. I've been lucky to have a lot of good teachers, and I'm hoping that I made this process a little bit faster for you. This is Plugged In with Fender. My name is Kenny Beats. Good luck. I'll see you soon.